Now joined live by Zoom by Dr. Sinan Sidi, a senior fellow on Turkey for the Foundation of for Defense of Four Democracies. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. So the Turkish foreign minister reportedly met today with uh, Haniye in Qatar. What, what is Erdogan trying to get out of these talks and meetings, in your opinion? Well, they're trying to achieve two things at the same time. Uh, one is, I think, they're trying to insert themselves into this entire sort of theater by saying, look, we're essential in, in, in as a negotiator, a go-between between Hamas uh, and the rest of uh, uh, the world, essentially. So you need to listen to us. Uh, I'm not sure how much access he has to that because... Uh, Erdogan has not been successful or useful to that extent, to that, for that matter, in actually helping, for example, getting hostages released. That's been more sort of the realm of, of Qatar, which also has a, a relationship, relationship with uh, Hamas. Uh, but on the other hand, this is also for domestic consumption at home for Erdogan, who has championed Hamas for a time immemorial, which has existed in Turkey at least since 2011. But he's really trying to sort of hammer home the point that Turkey uh, stands 100 percent behind, not as Erdogan, but in his own words, the whole state of Turkey stands behind uh, Hamas. And he just wants to make that known. All right. We've also heard harsh words from Erdogan in the last few days saying that uh, the prime minister Netanyahu, as well as the Israeli leadership, are solely responsible for the recent escalation of tension in the Middle East. Is this rhetoric aimed at the international community or at Erdogan's supporters within his country? I think both. I mean, he's, you know, look, he, he, he's doubling down on core beliefs and he's not going to shy away from them because that's not that nothing's going to change that. Um, he's committed 100 percent to inserting himself. The other thing that, you, you know, we should be aware of is today or tomorrow, based on what they're saying, is that, you know, a quote, a, a freedom flotilla is supposed to leave the shores of Turkey and attempt to uh, breach the naval blockade of Gaza and, quote, de, you know, in air quotes, deliver aid to Gaza directly because they don't recognize the blockade, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is a provocative and escalatory act, which Erdogan, we don't know to what extent he's sanctioning that, um, but I cannot imagine a scenario where without his direct say so, such a thing, thing could happen. You know, Turkey's been, been delivering aid to Gaza via established channels, um, but the, this notion that he's gonna, you know, Turkey's going to facilitate another flotilla like the Mavi Marmara of 2010, right, um, suggests that they're interested in sort of raising the stakes and tensions because, you know, this is who Erdogan is and he's basically throwing red meat at his, his own domestic audience. But he also wants to sort of, you know, light a, you know, light a fire under Israel. Mm. Also, at the same time, Erdogan telling Iran that Turkey doesn't want to see an escalation, but how is his stance right now not fueling those flames? That's a good question. I mean, you know, Erdogan has a vested interest in obviously uh, conflict not breaking out uh, with a direct Israeli strike on, 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 on Iran, simply because they're afraid that that could ha have the serious potential to not only, uh, you know, cross that conflict into Turkish borders, but, you know, it may very well come to the, uh, a place where Turkey will have to make a choice if there's a significant support for Israel in, in, in the event of a serious military escalation between Iran and Israel, then Turkey will probably have to choose sides between its sort of Western and established allies or whether it essentially, uh, you know, keeps quiet over and, 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 and cozies up, so to speak, uh, with Iran. All right. Do you think we'll see further sanctions on Israel from Turkey? I mean, I'm not sure what, if, if they can actually even work or they're serious about it. I mean, some reports suggest that whilst they've put trade restrictions on exports to Israel, that, that they be, you know, vendors in Turkey are basically going to circumvent these uh, by shipping them to, 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 to ports in Europe um, and then basically allow those goods then to be shipped indirectly to Israel via there. I'm not sure if they're serious about, uh, um, uh, 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 you know, further sanctions. I'm not sure if they're ser serious about sanctions in the first place, simply because they seem to be more interested in essentially, you know, making dollars and, and money for their own partisan supporters that benefit out of trade with Israel, whilst at the same time, you know, telling the Turkish people that Israel is, uh, is a state that deserves to be punished. It's very duplicitous and they know it, but they also don't seem to care. All right. Uh, we're we're uh, almost out of time. Do you have any final thoughts before we go? I would just say, you know, I, I would keep my eyes on this so-called freedom flotilla that could leave the shores of Turkey because We'll then have to see how the Israeli and the uh, military uh, Navy especially, as well as the U.S. Navy, will have to respond because it would be a major provocative move.
Mm, all right. Thank you very much, Dr. Sinan Sidi, the senior fellow on the Turkey for the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. Once again, I'm Emily Francis. Thank you so much for watching I-24 News on this day 193. We'll have more continuing coverage throughout the evening, so stay with us.